yields back. Chair recognizes himself. Madam Chair, why, um, why are you harassing Twitter? Uh, Congressman, thanks for the question. As you might know, the FTC's work on Twitter goes back a decade. Back in 2000. I'm not talking about a decade. I'm talking about now. Back 12 in demand letters in 10 weeks, 300, over 350 separate requests you've demanded of Twitter. Why are you harassing them? Twitter has a history of lax security and privacy policies. Previously, You've asked for every single communication relating to Elon Musk, not communications that he just sent to someone or some or communications he received, but any time he's mentioned. That, that actually seems more, actually more than harassment. That seems like almost an obsession. Why, why, the, why, why such an intense focus? So, Congressman, again, it was found that Twitter's lax privacy policies allowed unauthorized users to co-opt Twitter accounts including that of Fox News. Subsequently, Twitter voluntarily entered into a consent order with the FTC. Here's, here's Unfortunately, what you wrote in December. Found, Madam Chair, here's what you wrote in December. Identify all journalists and other members of the media to whom Twitter has granted access since Musk bought the company. You want to know the name of every journalist a private company has talked to? Think that's consistent with the First Amendment? Congressman, as a former journalist, I take extremely seriously the valuable work that they do and understand that there can be instances in which government action is unjustifiably Particularly, particularly Madam Chair, if I, could, particularly, if I could just interject, particularly in the context here. I mean, it's bad enough if you got government asking a private company about who are the journalists you're talking to, you name four of them and say, we want the other names of any journalists you may in fact be communicating with. That's bad enough, and I think a threat to the First Amendment freedom of the press but in the context of giving us information about how government had suppressed speech on these platforms, that's the context you're asking for. I think that's particularly troubling, don't you? Congressman, the consent decree that we have prohibits Twitter from sharing personal information with third parties. When we read in the papers, like everybody else, that Twitter may have granted access to third parties, that's what our teams were seeking information about. Again, this is a company whose history with the FTC Madam, goes Madam back Chair, a decade. Madam uh, Chair, we, we got limited time. Madam, Madam Chair, who is uh, David Roque? Could you repeat that, Congressman? David Roque, R-O-Q-U-E. Who is David Roque? I'm not familiar with You that. deposed him last month, June 21st, 2023. David Roque is the independent partner for Ernst & Young's independent assessment of Twitter's program. That's part of this consent decree. Um, do you know what Mr. Roque said in that deposition? I'm not aware. Okay, let me read it for you then, because I think it's pretty important. Mr. Roque testified, again, in front of your lawyers, you deposed him, testified that FTC's conduct made him feel as if the FTC was trying to influence the outcome of the engagement before it had started. He said, in some of the discussions that we were having with the Federal Trade Commission, expectations were being conveyed about what those results should be before we had even begun any procedures. So they're the independent assessor in this consent decree the FTC has with Twitter, and you're telling the guy, who is the, the person? He's the guy, he's Joe the accountant who's gonna get this information. You're telling him, you're putting your finger on the scale, telling him what you want the outcome to be, and he's supposed to be the independent fact finder. Why are you doing that? Congressman, I'm not familiar with those. Because it was just filed today, but we are. This is filed in court today, and this is your deposition. I'm happy to take a closer look at it and be back in touch. I will say as a general matter, we want to make sure that the assessors and auditors that are responsible for overseeing compliance are doing their job. You say Mr. Roke's line, what he testified here, what's been filed in court today, that there were suggestions of what they would expect the outcome to be, they being the FTC, there were suggestions of what they wanted him to go find in his independent assessment of the consent degree agreement, uh, 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 agreement between the FTC and Twitter. Again, I'm happy to take a close look and we can be back in touch with you about that allegation, but our staff are consummate professionals. Uh, when they conduct these investigations, they're focused on determining did you go after, whether there did was you go a after, did you? Is your uh, uh, attack on Twitter, harassment on Twitter, is that based on, on the fact that all kinds of Democrats have asked you to do this and frankly some things that you've written about dealing with, quote, disinformation? Does that have anything to do with it, Ms. Khan? Congressman, we make only independent determinations about whether there were law violations. Um, the statement from Chairman Nadler, the statements from uh, the, the letter, the press release in the letter from seven Democrat senators that had no impact on it, that's not why you're doing it? 
Absolutely not. We look very closely at the specific matter at hand. Again, 12 Twitter demand system. letters in 10 weeks telling the independent assessor, hey, put your finger on the scale. This is the results we want. That's, that's, that's not harassment, and it had nothing to do with the fact that every Democrat in this town seemed to be telling you to go after Twitter. Our focus is on protecting people's privacy and security. Uh, Twitter has sensitive data on 150 million Americans, including private messages. We need to make sure, especially given its history going all the way back to 2010, we're doing everything to make sure Twitter is complying with the order. That's fine. Don't put your finger on the scale and don't attack the First Amendment and the rights of journalists. Thank the gentleman for, uh, thank the gentleman for, for yielding. Um, Ms. Khan, uh, earlier, and, and I believe the gentleman from Arizona brought this up, you said people's privacy is paramount. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. And as we, we talked earlier, I do think there's bipartisan support to, to deal with that, this, this sweeping up of data that happens, and scarier yet is, is, is FBI purchasing that data. So that is of paramount importance. But I would, I would say the First Amendment's of paramount importance, too. Would you agree? Absolutely. Uh, and then... The gentleman from California, Mr. McClintock, asked you, what's, what's disinformation? And you said you don't really have an opinion on that. Is that was that, was that a fair assessment of your answer? Uh, as part of our job at the FTC, we're focused on deception and fraud and, and that sort of thing. Well, you wrote a couple years ago in a, in a law review article, digital businesses such as Twitter disserve their users by facilitating the spread of disinformation. What were you talking about there then? What's, what's disinformation? Uh, I'm happy to take a closer look at the material you're mentioning, but um, you know, as part of our work at the FTC, we've seen how fraud and scams can sometimes proliferate on these social media websites. Uh, we've launched an inquiry to try to understand, you know, why are some of these crypto scams really proliferating on these sites, and what can we be doing? These are the, these are the first two sentences in the introduction of the piece you wrote. Again, just a couple years ago, digital businesses such as Twitter disserve their users by facilitating the spread of disinformation. Who decides what's disinformation? From the FTC's perspective, it's deception, uh, deception and fraud. No, that's fine. You can keep here. using synonyms, but I want to know who decides that it's deception, who decides that it's fraud, who decides that it's disinformation. In this case, you're talking about social media companies and what gets posted on their platform. Who decides what's disinformation, what is it? So, Congressman, again, at the FTC, we're focused on fraud and deception. There is a legal standard about what constitutes fraud. Again, this is about... But you didn't say fraud or deception, you said disinformation. And my concern is, my concern is, again, and I've, it's probably the third time I've talked about this, but the sustained attack on Twitter when the ownership there changed and the platform was committed to not taking down speech, not taking down posts, allowing the sharing of information, uh, and not censoring information. And we just had a, a major decision last week from a court in Louisiana, a federal court in Louisiana, where they said the government was in fact pressuring big tech companies to censor, and big tech companies were willing to go along with it. Now we have a change there, and you're going after the one company that's changed how they're doing things. That's what concerns me, particularly in light of the fact that you just wrote about this a few years ago, saying this is what goes on. Congressman, uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity to clarify some issues here. So we at the FTC have no view on who should or should not own a company. All we care about is that the company is following the law. That's really what our focus we've is. Been, we've, we've covered that ground. I want to know. I want to know about disinformation and who decides what's disinformation. You think the government should decide that, Congressman? The way I see it is concentrations of economic power including over speech platforms and communications platform, that it's that concentrated power and the ability to pick who gets heard, who doesn't get heard, to make these types of decisions. That, I think, is concerning to all of us, and the FTC's job is to be promoting... You know what kind of speech was getting censored? Do you know what the court said last week? What kind, have you read the opinion, by the way? I have not. It did not concern the FTC. You know what kind of, you know what kind of speech was, was getting censored? You know what the court said? Conservative speech. Conservative speech was what was all, uh, the, the suppression was virtually all conservative. This is not Jim Jordan talking about, it's not Republicans on the Judiciary Committee talking, this is the, the federal judge who had the facts, 86 pages of facts, and laid out to put the facts and the law together in this opinion, strong opinion, which said it was a conservative speech that was get, getting censored and labeled as disinformation. So Congressman, I fully understand why, given the extreme concentration of power over some of these speech platforms, 
why people would be afraid and worried about censorship. I couldn't agree more that when you have a handful of people making decisions about what gets seen, what doesn't get seen, what, who and gets And you think heard, the remedy to that is for government to lay, decide what's disinformation and what, what's not? Congressman, at the FTC, our job is to promote competition. More competition means more people making these decisions. And